This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Queen's in on the act now. She's sending a message uh, to COP26, you know, usual stuff. Uh, if we fail to tackle climate change, all the other problems will pale into insignificance. Climate change, climate change, climate change, green, 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 eco, eco, eco. Aren't you sick of it? Aren't you bored of it? I've had enough. Leave us alone. There are other obsessions available, you know. Uh, but uh, before we uh, move on to uh, having a look at exactly what the Queen said, uh, let's uh, remind ourselves of our dear leader, Prime Minister Boris Johnson making his speech uh, at uh, the COP26 to launch this event earlier today. Well, this is very, very urgent for not just for our country, for the whole world. And if I had to give a comparison, I'd say it was a, it was a one minute to midnight moment and the, uh, the clock is, is, is ticking. We have to get uh, everybody to do more and they need to make further commitments. They need to make further commitments on how we're going to move away from coal, from fossil fuel burning, how we're going to move away from using a high, a hydrocarbon cars, uh, how we're going to plant millions of, of trees, if not a trillion trees around the world, increase, protect the world's biodiversity, and above all, how we're going to get the whole of the developing world to buy into this. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, I fell asleep there. Uh, now let's listen to Boris's hero, Greta Thunberg. Up here, I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? There is no planet B. There is no planet blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This is not about some expensive, politically correct, green act of bunny hugging or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she can talk. She's a real blah, blah, blah. She never stops blah, blah, blahing. She flies all over the world telling us that we've got to stop flying all over the world to save the planet. Uh, she's a kid who never went to school. Now she's an adult who hasn't got a job. Why does anyone listen to Greta Thunberg, the doom goblin? Uh, she was on the BBC yesterday. Uh, the way Andrew Marr behaved, you'd think he had Jesus Christ Almighty had popped into the studio. That It was the second coming or something uh I, i'm confused as to why every anybody ever listens to the doom goblin uh let's talk to uh political commentator connor tomlinson who's in the studio hi connor hello kevin i don't know how you expect me to keep a straight face over in the corner of the studio i'm not expecting your... you to keep a straight <laughs> face <laughs> it's it's pretty impossible at times like these i genuinely watched that andrew marr uh, interview ahead of obviously coming here tonight because you know we like to do a bit of prep here in talk radio so we can get all the, the greatest headlines for all of our viewers and I was waiting for her to say literally anything of substance whatsoever yeah. it, it completely stunned me that anyone still listens to this human being because she was trotted out at 16 um, shielded by the media and all the Hollywood class that reposted her speech on every Instagram feed that made me unfollow them all and we essentially said oh we can't criticize her because um, she's a, a child and uh, she's Autistic, right? Okay, so we, we, we say, oh, you can say whatever you want in the political sphere, but we can't get away with saying anything to you. Well, now you're 18 and you should know better. Well, have you studied any of the issues particularly? I don't think she's read the IPCC report because she clearly doesn't know any of the claims. When Andrew Marr decided to question her on, oh, what about Britain's emissions? Well, she didn't read the other report because DEFRA actually puts out facts that uh, it considers our con uh, consumption emissions in the thing. Why are we bothering talking to this woman when she doesn't have anything useful to say? I mean, she's become a sort of focal point for the climate change obsession of this, and I kind of get that. Uh, but it does surprise me. I mean, I remember at the height of her sort of fame, uh, do you remember that picture of sort of Michael Gove and all those ministers looking up at her adoringly? Oh, yeah. And it's kind of the cult of the kid, isn't it? It's worshipping children like they did in Marxist, uh, rather uh, in... Um, uh, in the in Soviet China, Union in China, in well. China, they had, they had a little Soviet statue Soviet of that girl that died in the plane Chairman crash. Chairman Mao's China, uh, uh, Stalin's Russia. Mm. Uh, it's you get the uh, the cult of worshipping children in these kind of uh, totalitarian states, uh, but we seem to have it now all over the world when it comes to Greta Thunberg. I mean, what's the point of her? There seems to be a simultaneous deference to children, some sort of authority. I know the SNP want to create a child climate councils that was one of the things they were consulting on a little while ago and we did that and i, I said to my when i was reading through it we were asked as an organization to feed back to them and i said 
a child is not a moral legislator on anything. If you can't pick your own bedtime, you can't tell me how to save the world. But then at the same time, we have all these activists running around like Extinction Rebellion and Insulate Britain, all these other clowns like the Sunrise Movement in America, inducing climate anxiety in our children. Now, the disturbing thing is, yeah, if you big, idiots... It's a big thing, that. Well, you, and adults. And exactly. Adults. If you idiots want to sit in the road, right... It's, it should absolutely be uh, prosecuted on, you know, we've got the injunction there already. Greta Thunberg turns around and said, oh, you know, as long as nobody's getting hurt, it doesn't matter. Well, people are getting hurt. But if you people want to risk your lives and, and run the possibility you get run over, be my bloody guest. The moment you infiltrate the classrooms, it becomes particularly pernicious. Because lockdown has just exacerbated the child mental health crisis. You've got one in six kids now, as of 2021, who might have a diagnosable mental health condition because we locked them in their homes for 18 months. And now you're foisting these doomsday prophecies on them and internalising the fact that they won't have a future. If the only person who's being told how dare you is going to be the climate activists at this point, stop screwing with children. And as you say, she doesn't come out with any particular facts. It's just a lot of emotional how dare mm. you and all that. You know, so where are the facts? Uh, you know, what I want is uh, definitive facts that prove that uh, mankind is entirely responsible for uh, what they used to call global warming, but they now call climate change. You know, the fashionable phrases mm. do tend to change as uh, time evolves. Uh, but uh, we don't know that, do we? No, it's funny how Boris turned around and said it's irrefutably scientifically true today that uh, mankind is entirely responsible for climate change. And it was such a fact that hit him so hard that he fell asleep at a talk as well as Joe Biden did. So he's clearly very concerned about all this. Yeah. Um, I'd love to also know I, I, if Greta Thunberg... I knew is... Joe, but did, did, did Boris fall asleep? Yeah, 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 it was a Boris Joe nodding did, off. But, but you expect Joe to fall well, asleep. It's about, the, it's about the only sensible thing those two have done for years. <laughs> um, the thing is with Greta as well, she hasn't proposed any actual solutions. She seems to be saying all this hubbub of raise awareness. Well, as you said, I think it's about time we we do in for a little bit of oh, lowering my awareness. My campaign to lower yeah. awareness of climate change. We're sick of being told how we're all responsible for 1%, exactly 1% of the apocalypse in this country. Um, Greta hasn't suggested a single suggestion as to how to solve this problem. She seems to just foist it off on everyone else. She's also, uh, it strikes me, a representative of uh, this kind of movement in the West. Hmm. Uh, you know, they're left-leaning and they are reluctant to point the finger at the real yep. villains, uh, the uh, socialist dream of China mm. and indeed Russia. They don't like pointing the finger at China and Russia, uh, so they spend all their time moaning about us. We produce 1% of the world's pollution. In other words, we're not even a player in this. It doesn't matter what Britain does. There's nothing we can do to change uh, the world or the course of China, climate change. But China produces 28%, and yet Greta never seems to want to focus any of her theatrical fury on Beijing or Xi Jinping. Well, there's a bit of... Uh, who isn't at COP26. Oh, yeah, course. well, again, someone made a conveniently sensible decision to do that there. Um, one of the tragic bits of gold from the Andrew Moore interview with Greta Thunberg was when he asked her, are you in contact with climate protesters in China? And she sort of weaseled her way around and said, oh, yeah, well, we're trying to, we haven't got the right to. It's like, well, obviously in not. Otherwise, no. Yeah, obviously not, because unfortunately, all the protesters that like to criticise the government in, in China have a tendency of ending up on the wrong side of a tank, t uh, tank track tread. Yeah. So it's highly unlikely that she's actually going to uh, be taking time to China's task, because she'll be taking taken to task by her own handlers. Um, the other disturbing thing as well is, as you said, with her being very left-leaning, have you read her co-authored piece in the Syndicate Project paper by any chance? Uh, so, yeah, well, funny enough, Connor, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's very illuminating because she co-wrote it with two other activists and they said, um, actually, the climate is a perfect opportunity to address things like white supremacy and patriarchy and all that and that. So it's just a Trojan horse for their preferred social issues, exactly like Extinction Rebellion, exactly like Insulate Britain. They want to package on this identity socialism along to the issues of the day. First it was global cooling, then it was global warming, now it's climate change. I mean, look, I'm perfectly happy to say we should address environmental issues, but am I convinced the sun's going to descend from the sky and eat us unless we somehow overthrow the patriarchy? No, I'm quite not. It's not an emergency, is it? I wouldn't say so, especially because the 2050 uh, IPCC target doesn't say anything about the entire world going to, going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, in the last hundred years, the natural disaster deaths have been lowered by 99% purely due to tech innovation, even though they've increased in likelihood. And it f comes out, uh, the Committee on Climate Change said the other day, even if we met the 2050 targets, even if the whole world did it, do you know what the odds are on it if it actually do anything? 50%. It's literal coin flip. Yeah, so we could yeah. be imploding the entire world, especially us at the expense of uh, China with that Cold War that we're currently ongoing with them, and it wouldn't do a damn bit of difference. Uh, I'm asking the question tonight, Connor, uh, do you think that... Um COP26 will be an own goal because I think people are already looking at the mm. incredible opulence of all these world leaders who popped off at the lovely eternal city of Rome for a few days for a G20, mm. marched around there for photo ops, had uh, lovely banquets, champagne receptions, then all hopped on their private jets, flew to Glasgow uh, for COP26. Uh, but 
Joe Biden arrived in Air Force One, uh, the most eco-unfriendly form of transport known to man. There's about seven people on board. It's a 747. Uh, and uh, he arrived with uh, over 100 staff and uh, 85 cars. So I think the people of Britain, the people of the world are looking at this and saying this is a grotesque display of hypocrisy. And therefore, uh, we will not be lectured to by these hypocrites. The Conservative estimates of their emissions of the private jet and the, the car envoys alone are more than Scotland emits for the entire year. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it's entirely ridiculous as well. If you saw the photos with uh, not just the mask theatre when they put them on to then take them off for the photos, but everyone was mobbing Greta was wearing the disposable plastic mask. There are more of those in our oceans than jellyfish at the moment and we bought them all from China yeah. who are producing them all, who are doing the most emissions. Seems a bit self-defeating there. My concern as well is I actually care about some of these issues. Like I know, I, everyone, you, do. I know you do. Yeah. Well, everyone, like yourself, you care very much about the welfare of animals. I care about clean water, clean air, and not make sure my parks aren't I'm not, despoiled. I'm not unconcerned about it. I just well, think we're, we, as a, as a species, if you yeah. like, we're going about it the wrong way. Exactly, and that's my thing. I think this is going to put a lot of people off the sensible solutions that the alternatives. That's why hopefully you know we're up there to have the conversation about how much it costs when they won't certainly have it at the table because they're just spending all of your money. But I think the boiling point conversation at the moment of having a referendum about net zero even though i'm perfectly happy to say oh net zero be a desirable goal i don't think we'll hit it by 2050 i think that's a perfectly legitimate uh, uh, concern to have to say hey the conservatives weren't elected on this we didn't vote blue to get green we voted you on get brexit done and national sovereignty and now you're selling away our futures and a load of debt so should we have a referendum on net zero after cop 26 comes about it i think that's going to be one of the main points of conversation uh so, so you would you agree with me i suspect and i fear i don't want cop 26 to fail no. but i think it's going to be a spectacular failure an uh, own goal it's going to achieve exactly the opposite of what it sets out to achieve and that is it's going to put people off uh, the cause of climate change because they don't want to be lectured to by hypocrites who are basically saying don't do as we do do as we say the people of britain don't put up with that stuff no good idea was ever paired with an insult and if you're going to tell people that you're putting out of work that they can't put a roof over the kid's head and food on the table oh suck it up you're a climate denier you're not going to get anyone on side so I, I think it's going to be a pretty spectacular disappointment, um, given that it seems to be all big spending socialism. It's going to internalise all the risks and none of the rewards on the British taxpayer. And I don't think it's even going to meet the targets, just like the uh, Paris Accords did. They set them out in 2015. Did every yeah. nation exceed them? Yeah. Yes. Did the only nation that quit was uh, under President Trump in the US? They were the ones that led uh, lowering emissions from 2017 to 2019, year on year. So it shows you don't need these big term agreements. You just need sensible policy making. I don't think we're going to get that in Glasgow this year. Yeah. And Boris, of course, said that uh, history will judge uh, the world. World leaders who don't step up at this COP26 conference. Uh, why, why does he say that? I mean, uh, what, history hasn't judged uh, the world leaders that didn't step up the 25 previous useless COP26 events. So uh, it's all verbiage. It's all nonsense. Uh, and I've listened to what you've had to say, uh, Connor, and you've laid out uh, your arguments. And uh, I just need to say to you, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> No, it's great stuff, Connor. Thank you so Perfect. much for coming in. Uh, Connor Tomlinson, political commentator from the Young Voices UK organisation.